Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday and I've been working on a full stack Next.js course covering everything you'll need to build a website front end to back end. So that would be uh, Apollo client on the front end, Next.js. We're using maps on the back end. We've got GraphQL, Prisma 2, there's authentication. We're going to deploy it, all of that stuff. And I'll show you one thing that was sort of annoying that I ran into and how I solved it. So you can see on this map here, I can zoom in find the homes that I want. Maybe I click into this nice chicken. It brings me to a page for the chicken. I hit back and the map reset, right? Now I gotta zoom in again, find the house I want. I click another one, I go home, it's gone. And one thing, uh, this was really annoying, like no user would wanna have to research for the spot in the map every time. So I built a little hook, which I'm going to, um, comment out the use state version and um, uncomment the use local state version. And what this does is it stores the state in local state so that when the user goes back or refreshes the page, it's remembered what was in state so the user doesn't, in this case, have to recenter the map. So here we'll go and you can see that it's, it's zoomed in here. We'll zoom into Toronto. Um, and the way this course does is it, it uh, requeries and shows you just the houses that are within the area of the map. So we'll click into the chicken, go back and see how the maps in the same spot now. Go back, refresh the page and it's all remembered. Then that's every time the state changes, it's writing that to local state. And whenever you have to initialize the state, it's reading from local storage. Sorry, local state, local storage I'm talking about. And we're going to quickly show how to build a hook to do this. So we're going to leave this um, bigger app now because that's coming for the, the course later. That's going to be many videos to cover all of those topics. And we're just going to work in a simple Next.js app that has this input here with the label something memorable. So I'm going to open up that code, switch over to it. So I haven't built anything here yet. So we're going to start by importing use state hook from react because we want to hook up this input to state. So we'll come here and we'll say um, const value set value is equal to use state and we'll start it off as an empty string. So we want to set the value of this input to be value and on change we'll get the event and we'll call set value for the event dot target. So that's the input uh, dot value. So we've, uh, I've messed up something. There we go. So now we've got this input hooked up. Hello there. It's working, but I refresh the page and it's gone, right? Cause use state is only stored in memory. So as soon as the user refreshes the page, it's gone. So what I wanted to do is basically whenever this value changes, write it to local storage. And whenever we need to initialize the state, read from local storage. So to do that, I'm going to create a custom hook called use local state. And what this is going to do, see here, we're passing in an initial value. So we're gonna have to receive an initial value. But the way local storage works is that you also need a key. It's basically a key value pair. Um, so we're also going to need to pass in a key. So I'm gonna to start to use this use local state instead. So that's our initial value, but we need to pass in a key. So what should we call this? Let's just call this uh, memorable. It doesn't really matter, but that's gonna be used when storing it in local storage. So what we're gonna do here is basically use local state within our hook. So we'll say const value set value is equal to use state. And whenever you use, use state, you can pass in sort of a hard coded value or you can actually pass in a function and it will call the function and take its return value and use that as the initial value in state. So we're gonna be doing that inside of here. And for now, why don't we just return the initial value that was passed up here, just so that we can get this uh, custom hook working and then we'll work on improving it. And we need to return the same sort of signature here that it's expecting from use state. 
to make it look and feel as close as possible. So we're going to return an array with uh, two elements, so just value and set value. So we're not using the key yet, but it should at least work the exact same. Hello there. Refresh the page, it's gone. So we need to work on saving this value to local storage. So why don't we start with that? And to do that, we're going to use use effect. And because an effect basically happens when some value changes, there's a side effect. You want something else to happen. So what we want to happen is basically to write the new value into local storage. So we'll say use effect. Here's the function to call. We're going to be looking for changes to the value. And whenever there's changes to the value, what we want to do is write those to local storage. So we'll just say window.localStorage.setItem. That's how you write a value. And you always have to write a value using a key and then a value. So the value always has to be a string in local storage. So we're lucky here because this is a string. But what if it was an object, as is the case in my map example that I'm using in the course? So you can't write an object to local storage. It will show up as a string that's like object. You know how it, an object looks like when it's sort of converted into a string? So what we want to do is json.stringify whatever the value is to store it as a json string, just like that. So now when I start typing, hello. So refresh, it's not being pulled back from local storage, but if I were to go, let me just type hello there. If I were to go look at local storage, I should see this value in here now. So we'll go to application, local storage, and see you've got memorable here with a value of hello, which is perfect. The only thing that's missing right now is for me to read this in the initial value. So we're going to do that up here in this initializer function. And what we're going to do is we're going to say if, and when you're in Next.js, you got to be careful here because this code may run on the server when you're doing server side rendering and the server does not have local storage. So you want to first check to make sure that you're actually running in the browser. Um, use effect, I don't think that runs on the server, so you don't have to worry too much about this here because this actually happens after the render, not sort of as part of it. So we're not gonna worry here, but here we're gonna say, um, we need to check that we're in the browser. So we can say um, type of window is not equal to undefined. That's uh, basically, we're sure that there's a window, it's not undefined. Um, so we'll do this if statement. And now what we wanna do is basically read local storage to see if the value's there. So we'll say um, saved, we'll put in a variable called saved, and we'll say is equal to window.localStorage.getItem with the key. So there may not be a value there, it may be undefined. So why don't we just say if saved to make sure that um, there's something there. And let's see what it comes back if we read something that doesn't exist. So window uh, local storage get item, um, nope. So it's null, it comes back as null when it doesn't exist in local storage. So we could say if saved is not equal to null, then what we wanna do is basically return that. But remember, we can't just return the value because it's been JSON stringified. So what we need to do is return the JSON.parsed version of it like this. So basically when it initializes the state, it's first going to check that we're running in the browser. It's going to try to load the item from local storage. If it's not null, it's going to return the parsed version of that. Otherwise it will just come down here and return the initial version. So whatever you passed in down here instead. So now when we refresh, you can see that it's remembered. Hello there. We can refresh, do whatever we want, and it's gonna save our value. Um, if you wanted it a little bit more temporary, you could change local storage to session storage. So same idea, hello, it's there when you refresh. Um, local storage and session storage have the same API. 
Session storage, though, is, is removed when the session's ended. So when you close out all the browser, the session's gone, the user comes back. One thing to keep in mind with either of these approaches, you don't want to store anything sensitive because there's no security. If one user logs out, another one logs in, the same local storage is here. So you want to use it for things that um, the default uh, broke something. There we go. You want to use it for things that aren't that sort of crucial. Something like the map in this case, like it doesn't really matter if it loads one area of the map versus something else. In this case, I don't know if you'd want to store input unless it's like a search or something. It's uh, totally up to you how you use it. You could store um, light mode versus dark mode in the browser and a number of different things. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to cover today. A, a small custom hook that uses two other hooks, use state and use effect, to persist the, the, the state to local storage so that when the user refreshes the page or goes somewhere and comes back, um, they don't have to start from scratch every time. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, take care. Bye.